Hallelujah. Can I have you? You may be seated. Can I have your attention to the screen? We said, oh, God, do this, do this. He says, I will, but not without you. Oh, Lord, just save the lost in our city. My God, bring them in from the highways and the byways. And he says, that's your job. You bring them in, I'll save them. God tells us in his word to encourage one another. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, it says, Therefore, encourage, admonish, and exhort one another, and edify, strengthen, and build up one another, just as you are doing. And the very day where I was going to end it, God got such a grip on me and showed me in a very tangible way, I love you. I have great things for you. We'd like to invite all the ladies in the house to Unstoppable. Do you know what Unstoppable means? Nothing, absolutely nothing can stop us. No matter the storm, no matter the trial, no matter what is coming your way, we are unstoppable because we have the very DNA of Jesus Christ. So we are inviting you to the extraordinary uh, conference, the Unstoppable Conference, and it is going to be two powerful nights, Friday night, May 15th, and Saturday, May 16th. As you can tell, we have anointed speakers, Pastor Cheryl, our own very Pastor, Pastor Cheryl, on Friday night will be leading us off, where we're going to encounter the presence of God in a mighty way. And then Saturday morning, Dr. Iverna Tompkins um, is going to bring a powerful word as well, we'll embrace, and then... Um, will be empowered by Linda Wright, who will lead us out. And so come May 15th and 16th, we need your registrations to be, uh, to be in by May 12th. And you can register as soon as possible. It's only $10. We don't want anything to stop you from coming, though. Remember, we're unstoppable. And so you can either register in the bookstore after the service. You can register online. You can also register. We are advertising the event on K-Love as well. So you can actually register through the K-Love website, okay? So, again, that's unstoppable. We're going from an ordinary to an extraordinary life. Does anybody want to live an extraordinary life? Yeah. All right. So sometimes to get out of the ordinary, we just need one encounter, one encounter to take us to extraordinary. Are you going to sign up, ladies? Yeah. All right. We hope to see you there, May 15th and 16th. Praise the Lord. Can't think of a better way to spend uh, Cinco de Mayo than a church. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You didn't realize that, did you? Huh. Gotcha. Praise God. Well, um, very short announcement list tonight, so you're all blessed. Uh, we have men's and women's Bible studies continuing again Wednesday nights. That's uh, 630 Wednesday night. And we have child care available in the back. So men are meeting in the youth group uh, building. The women are meeting in the kitchen. If you haven't been able to come, men or women, please come. Come because you're going to be blessed. God wants to impart things to you. God wants to deposit stuff into you. God wants to grow you. And, and you don't grow independent of the body of Christ. You just don't. I don't know if that's a revelation for anyone, but the people that are making it on their own are doing it just on their own, and there's not going to be any fruit. So please, if you can make it, we'd love to have you come. Uh, men, this Friday night, it's Fight Club. Arr, come on, Lincoln. Arr, arr. Fight Club is going to be uh, this Friday. Pastor Gus is going to be sharing, praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm going to definitely, amen. Amen. Let's make the ladies jealous. Hallelujah. And um, we're going to have uh, we're going to have subs and salad. We could use help setting up. So if you're available around 530 men, come on over. We can help set up. Then there'll be some social time. Then there'll be some food time and some praise time. And there'll be a good time. So I'd love to have you come to that. And uh, do we have any first-time guests be our guest? Praise the Lord. I see that hand. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Welcome. 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 We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We want you to know that. 
at the uh, end of the service, if you go into the bookstore, we do have Bibles, and we also have a card we'd love you to fill out. If you need a, a Bible, obviously get one, but fill out the card. Let us know how you found out about us and what we can do to help you in your walk. That would be awesome. Um, and then what we're going to do now, we're going to have the ushers get ready to take the offering. Amen. Amen. Pastor, they listened to you the other day. They heard, they heard, they heard Sunday. They got you. Praise God. Didn't need to warm them up or anything. It was awesome. No sticks, nothing. Praise God. So we're going to get ready to take an offering. And then on top of that, we're going to, get, we're going to give, which we're going to be blessed to give, but we're going to get blessed also because we're going to have some others giving in a second. Praise God. Amen? Looking forward to that. So um, at this time, Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity, God, to have something to give and to have something to be thankful for. Father, we love you, and we pray that your kingdom would be built up from what we do. We love you, and we just ask you to just bless the service and the, the people, Lord God, that are ministering, Lord God, tonight. Lord, bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. Please remain seated. Then I had a rude awakening when I was riding on my high horse of pride. The lamb of light came by my side, opened up my spiritually eyes, but blinded my fleshly burdened eyes. So the devil kept on dicking, he kept on picking at my spirit, tried to get it weakened. But Jeremiah 29 11, kept on speaking in my heart till I started sinking. My mind's in my way with the results of thinking. Lean now on your own understanding, hoping the future was an understatement. Cause the pain I was in with the demons that haunted me again. Couldn't even sleep till I was nearly 10. Lord knows it was. Him and brought me through when I was lost in my worldly sin. Mommy and daddy will argue over and over. Hatred rolled my mind like a Range Rover. Lord knows it should have been, Lord knows it should have been, Lord knows it should have been game over, over. It should have been game over for me. But it was Jesus who brought me to where I am. It was Jesus. Because only He knows. Know. Lord, you know. Lord knows. Lord, you know the pain and the fear yeah. and the struggle. Every tear I cry. Oh, Lord, I can't deny. Can't hide from you, Jesus. Lord, you know. Lord, you know how. Yeah. Listen. I lost my father when I was 16. Left his verse back to when I was 13. When I was living for the devil, bloodthirsty. I should have been in jail, but got a mercy. Said my father was my God when I was lost. He guided me right back to the cross. Now that I'm there, I've never been the same since then. But now I've been in a deep pain, depression. Let's try to be my best friend. Rejection has been the pain of my rare end. Lord, should I die or should I try to fight sin? Feel like Edgar Allan Poe with the raven. But there is no bird that can scare me. Cause I know my God will take care of me. Just like he feeds the birds and the bees. Jesus is right, he's the king of kings So put your faith in things that you can't see Cause things unseen are everlasting Yeah, we serve a God that don't believe in procrastinating But an on-time God shall rule with an iron rod So when you're going through your trials, keep a steady nod Cause God knows your needs and plus he's Jehovah Jireh Yeah See, God knows your needs Every need you have, God knows Only the Lord knows that he will provide for you he will come through for you, cause only the Lord knows. He knows. You know. Yeah. Uh, what would life be like if we didn't have
not for Bill B. Chaos to the real, no joke. I remember the first day I first saw dope. I was so to press, I cut the play, then the smoke, but something in my heart told me that's an old drop. Down to the knees and bow to the flow, cause I'm here to tell you that Jesus, he's the reason why you shouldn't give up, cause only he knows your future. So if you blow up, go pour up, fall seven times, get back up in the name of the one who shines. The one that gave sight to the ones who are blind. Yeah, we all go to trials, but there's a thin line, but Jesus, he can cut it up like he did the film, no lie. Keep your eyes to the sky, so let others criticize. Just like Joe's friends, yeah, we gon' have Illy who's in our lives. And only Lord knows how many Judas is were happy before we die. But don't let other people dictate your life. Cause only God knows the plans and the hope in the future he has for your life. So keep it right, he's the lamb of the light. Light, light. People are gonna criticize you. People are gonna put you down. But you know what? Only the Lord knows. And you keep the thing, the thing, you keep going strong. Cause only the Lord knows. Keep going strong for Jesus. You know. Jesus. Lord, you know. Lord, you know. Lord, you know. Lord, you know. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy.
When my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then
place but victors through Christ Jesus because he's overcome and he lives in us greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world come on now hallelujah do you believe that in this place that the one that lives in us is greater and because he's overcome so will we shout yes come on now hallelujah come on Sing that again and find somebody and de decree it to somebody. Find somebody. Find somebody. Come on, don't be scared. Come on now. Come on now. He is a Come on, let somebody know. Oh, one more time. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place. Pray your will to be done, your name to be glorified. You know, be heart in this place. Not one of us to walk out the same way we came in. Holy Spirit, we ask you to continue to have your way in this place. Jesus, we say thank you for the cross. Thank you for your grace. We thank you for mercy. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. You, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Find five people and say, praise the Lord. Get ready. Praise the Lord. Amen. You guys, please, 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 please. Um, 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 during the time of like when the service is going on, please help us out because we almost tackled somebody just now. Amen. I mean, right now, I mean, if you're during the service, during, if there's not an altar time going on and we see somebody just kind of, we don't know what to expect. So we've had issues here before. So do not come to the front of this altar unless we've opened up the altars, especially in the middle of service. When we start to, see, do you understand what I'm saying? Because as much as I like to think that everybody likes me, not everybody likes me. Amen. And that's okay, because they, they, as much as they love Jesus, they, they wanted to throw him off the cliff, too. So when you're doing something right for God, too, and you're preaching the gospel, um, you know, you're not going to be the most popular person. So, um, and sometimes people like just, it's like, there's, <laughs> look at somebody, just don't do it. If you're looking for somebody or there's such a, find somebody in the back and let them know what's going on, because that's suspicious, you know? And... Actually made it all the way to over here, by the way, Kent. Praise God right here. Amen. Over right to here. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Bianca, oh, she would have never made it that far. Amen. She's <laughs> Amen. No, I'm sure, and I'm sure everything was okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm sure she was, you know, or, you know, but I'm saying, but that was very, so please don't do that. Please. Please don't do that. If you have your Bibles, Psalms. Chapter 84, verse 5, 6, and 7. Go on as I 
I was talking to Preston here from Teen Challenge and the guys from Teen Challenge. Praise God. God bless you guys once again being here. Um, I go, I'm, I've, I've, been, I've been in my spirit. I've just had this in my spirit from, actually, I was thinking about doing it on Sunday too, but of course, we went in a different direction on Sunday. But um, I haven't done this in a long time, but I feel like going old school. Pull, it's an old message from a, a while ago. It's been a, while, it's been a season. It's been seasons before I've ministered on this word. And I kind of want to just preach it just the way I preached it probably about three, four, five years ago. I don't even remember the last time I preached it. Is that okay? I'm just going to just kind of, I just feel like it's a word for somebody. And, um, and I don't want to change it. I don't want to add anything. I don't want to subtract anything. I just, you know, unless God says so. But um, just the way it was shared so many years ago back. Psalms 84, verse 5, 6, and 7. It's um, New King James. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. Verse 6. As they pass through the... As they... As they... As they... You guys, make sure there's somebody with them. Praise the Lord. Sorry about that. As I always say, never a dull moment at Fire and Water International Church. It's one of those nights. But you do realize when, when, when God is doing something and the Spirit of God is in a place, things have a tendency to kind of manifest. I remember being in Indonesia, ministering the Word of God overseas, and um, and I was talking to somebody, and, um, and, uh, and I was talking to somebody before service, and um, just normal, they were fine, and then all of a sudden we got into the service, and um, the worship, the praise, the Word, and then the altar time, the same person that I was talking to that was normal, all of a sudden their eyes were rolling back, foaming in the mouth, I mean, but there was a strong anointing, you know, and I mean, things were just happening, I mean, things were just, I mean, you know, because under anointing and when the presence of God is, something's got to give, amen, and something doesn't belong, uh, is going to, is going to, it can only stay in one place for so long or it manifests itself. That's where you start to get some of the, some of the weird stuff that happens, amen, and some devils and some things and some things, amen, praise God. Look at some song, you're in the right place. Yeah, amen. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you whose heart is set on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca they make it a spring the rain also covers it with pools they go from strength to strength every one of them appears before God in Zion now, the pilgrimage to Zion to the temple which is uh, a place of victory amen look at someone say this is a place of victory pass through the barren uh, valley of Baca. Uh, now, Baca means uh, uh, a place of weeping. It's a place of weaken, weeping. That's what Baca means. It is symbolic to the times of trials. It is symbolic of times of tribulation that we go through, uh, struggles, uh, tears uh, that we experience in our lives, in our journey, in the assignment, as God has called us during the season in our lives until we get to heaven, it is during the, it is symbolic, amen, that even when we're doing everything right, even when we're following the Lord with all our hearts, there will be times and there will be seasons where we will have to go through this place called Baca, this place of weeping. Uh, 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 even when you're doing everything right, amen, it, it, there's going to be those trials, there's going to be those moments in life. And Baca is the place that we go through before we get the breakthrough. Amen. It, 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 Baca is always, it always comes first before Zion. Zion is not before Baca. Baca, if you, uh, it, 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 if you look in the map and, and as, you, as, you, as you go forward, you won't see Zion before Baca. Baca will always be before Zion. The valley will always be before the mountaintop. Uh, the battle will, be, will, be, will always be before um, somebody can open up their mouths and say, I am victorious. 
Uh, you're not going to be able to say, I am victorious in something. I have the victory in something. I've got the breakthrough in something until you've been in a good old-fashioned battle. See, the battle's got to come first, amen? Because how can you say, I've got a victory? A victory in what? What did you come out of? What it, well, you've got to come. You've got to be in a battle, a good fight, so then when you come out, you are able to say, I've got victory. Victory from what? From this thing, from this battle. And one needs the other. Uh, like I've said, one needs the other. You can't have a promised land until you've had a desert. You can't, you can't enter the promised land until you go through the desert. The, pro the desert comes before the promised land. The battle before I could say I got victory. The valley before the mountaintop. Zion, Baca before Zion. Weeping, weeping, weeping. And for many tonight, you find yourself in this place. This, this, this place called Baca, this place uh, that you never even... Uh, signed up for it, this, this, this unpopular destination, this unpopular vacation place. This wasn't a place you wanted to go to. This isn't a place you want to settle. This isn't the place that you want to spend time in. This isn't a place that you are looking forward to. This, is the, this isn't even on the list. This isn't even in the bottom of the list. This is not even on the list for you to go to, amen? It's uncomfortable. It's not easy. It's, 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 it's barren. It's, 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 it's difficult. It's, 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 it's uncomfortable. It's, 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 it's baka. It's a, it's a place of weeping. And for many here tonight, the devil has come and has said to you that baka, this place of weeping, this valley you are experiencing right now in your life is a bad place. It's a horrible place that God has left you, that God isn't around, that you've messed up. That's why you're in this place. Where is your God? Where are God's giving you promises? And look at where you're at. Look at what you're going through. That Jesus has left you to give up, to give in. That God will never heal you. That God will never deliver you. That God will never bring that son home. That God will never bring that daughter home. That God will never save that family member. That, that to give up, there's no future. There, uh, you've messed up uh, so many times. And, and here you are in this place called Baca. And, and, and God's not going to give you another opportunity. God isn't going to restore. God, you're, you're always, you're always going to be stuck in this cycle. You're always going to be in that. You might as well just give up. And, and it's a place of weeping. It's a place of weeping. And, and the enemy has 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 has, has has, has, has said to you, it's over. God won't forgive you. God won't restore you. And you knew better because you were in church before and now you're out of church and you've messed up. This is the fourth time. This is the fifth time. This is the sixth time. And you find yourself in this place that's barren, this place of weeping. And you feel like, okay, it's over. It's over. It's over. And the devil said, it's over. God won't give you another opportunity. God won't give you another. God won't restore you. They'll never, you're always going to be this way. You're always going to be this way. It's never going to change. You're always going to be this way. God will never give you another opportunity. God will not. No, no. You're always going to be this way. Place of weeping where you've tried and you've tried and you've tried. In your heart, trying to get things right, having some victory for a little while, and there you are again. There you are again. In that mess again, in that cycle again, in that, it's that barren place. It's a place where you're midnight hour, late at night, there you are weeping and crying. Tears of hopelessness and tears of, this is as good as it's going to get. I want you to find five people right now and say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Got no future. 
Baca, let me say something here. Place of weeping. We know in our, in our text here, before you get to Zion, you go through Baca. Uh, the enemy would say, horrible place. End of chapter, game over. Baca. End of story. End of game. It's over. But God has sent me once again here so many years later to let you know that Baca, Baca is a great place to be. I said it's a great place to be. I said it's a great place to be. It is not a place. Listen, it is not a place to put down your head. It is not a place to think it is over or to give in or to give up. But actually, it is a place to start lifting up your head and understand that God's about to do a thing in your life. The uh, Baca is a, is a place where God is setting you up for a miracle, for a blessing. I said, I said for a miracle. Yeah, yeah I want to say it again. God is setting you up. Even, even if the circumstances that have led you into this place, Baca, this place of weeping, were out of your control. Or, the circum or there were decisions that you made that were bad decisions that have led you to this place. Either way, depending on how you respond in the midst of your Baca experience, I'm here to tell you, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen? Which means... Uh, circumstances that were out of your control, um, decisions or, or mess ups that you, bad choices, bad decisions, sins that have led you to this place. If you, uh, 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 all things work together for the good for those who love, for those who love God, for those who love God. Uh, look at somebody say, that's relationship. So if I don't give up, run away from God or give up, from the things of God, but I run to God, uh, uh, the things of God, and, 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 and call upon his name in the midst of it. Baca is not a bad place, but actually it is a place where God is setting you up for a miracle and a blessing. It is a setup. I said it is a setup. It is a setup. Look at somebody right now and say God's about, God is setting you up. It's a setup. It's a setup. Five more people. Five, five more people. It's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup for God. For God. Your Baca experience is a setup for a step up into your next level. You're not in this place. Your Baca experience is a setup and a step up. For his glory. It is the step before our Zion experience. As I said before, the place of victory. Psalms chapter 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 126 verse 5 says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. John chapter 16 verse 20 goes on to say, Most assuredly I say to you, that you will weep and grieve, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Ah, Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. My God, are you here? Are you listening? Watch this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why am I not going to fear? Because, uh, because the valley or Baca is not a permanent place. It is not a place, a final destination. Uh, my Bible tells me that even while I walk through the valley, amen, so that lets me know that God is telling me 
that my destination is not to be uh, 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 to put up residence and it's the end of the road, but it's a process of me um, going through so I can come out on the other side. Amen. It's just how I handle my Baca experience. It's how I respond to my Baca experience. Amen. It's how I, re- which point of view, how do I look at my Baca experience? And if I listen to the enemy, then fear is going to come in paralyze me, take my faith away, and instead of walking by faith and not by uh, walking by faith and not by sight, I'm going to start walking by sight and not by faith, and then I'm going to live in Baca. God never made you or me to live in Baca. Amen? Shut up. I'm not staying there. Through through the valley. Zion. Baca. Baca. Before Zion. But the destination is Zion, not Baca. Through the valley. I'm not going to fear because I know God's with me. And I know that in due season, I'm going to come out on the other side. The mountaintop is next. The best is yet to come. Because it is impossible for a child of God to stay in the same place forever if you are truly following the Lord with all your heart. Now, if you mess up, there's a solution. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. So get it right. So your Baca experience could be a place where God loves you so much that he's just trying to get your attention to get some things right. For some, being in prison was the greatest thing that happened because that was Baca. Because it was in that cell that God got your attention to get things right in your heart. And when you got things right in your heart, look at you now. Ah, uh, you're not in this place. What we think is the worst thing that could ever happen to us is actually the thing that if we respond the right way and trust in the Lord and run to God instead of running from him, becomes an altar that we look back on and say, man, thank God for that season in my life. Anybody got some of those? Because I have many of those. Bible says, don't grow weary in doing good, for in due season, you will reap a harvest. Martin Luther King Jr., we know, 1963, great speech, nation's capital, I have a dream. I have a dream, change the destiny of a nation. But, but before that, um, the Bible, let the, 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 his story lets us know that he was, he was stabbed at a signing and he almost lost his life um, by somebody. Or how about during just a few years apart, his house was, um, was, 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 I don't know about you, but if I'm about something and then all of a sudden, man, my, my life is being threatened with my house being blown up, people stabbing me with, and with a, actually it was a letter opener, almost lost his life, but actually he continued to go forward. He actually never, if I got my information correctly, he never, um, 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 he didn't put any charges on the on the person that did it to to him, and and his message actually picked up more fuel of his message of nonviolence, but of love, of turning the other cheek. You're not in this place. You can't. You know. You don't understand what I'm saying. Just read read the history books. So he responded, and because he responded the right way, it just fueled his message. So when he had something to say. 
there was something to what he had to say. Because you understand a lot of people are saying a lot of stuff, but no one's listening. It doesn't demand attention. Let us be people that when we say something, people will listen. Um, the great Moses had a Baca experience. King David had a Baca experience. Paul and Silas had a Baca experience. Amen. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Uh, uh, every, 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 everyone that accomplished greatness in the past, there was a time, and not just once, but multiple Baca experiences. Amen. But it was a good thing, amen, because actually what it did was it got, got, them, it, it, it got them closer to the Lord or, or uh, 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 it helps us, let me say like this, get us closer to the Lord. Uh, uh, for we, uh, so we understand it's, it's when, we, when we go through these times of, 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 of weeping in, in, these, in these places where, uh, 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 where, where it's like uh, there's no one else around, we, we start to understand that, that I can do all things through Christ Jesus only, amen, that I can't do a thing without him, amen, that, that, uh, that greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. It's, it's in this place that uh, I start to realize um, that, you know what, uh, without him, I can't take another step. These are good things, amen. We need to be reminded every once in a while that I'm not all that in a bag of chips, but I am all that in a bag of chips when Jesus is in control of my life. Uh, it's, it's, it's where, and today if you're facing an impossible situation, start to praise the Lord. If you're in a place of weeping, start to praise the Lord. Rejoice, for God takes impossible situation and makes impossible for his glory. Just write this down. Number one, Baca. What, why, why should we rejoice? Because it is where we get closer to God. The Bible says, draw an eye to me and I will draw an eye to you. Um, in our society today, we have a tendency. In church today, we have a tendency when we come to church for a while and things get a little bit better, we get a little bit stronger. We feel a little bit better. God answers some of our prayers. We get some financial breakthrough. We get back on our feet a little bit. We, we, we're not sleeping on the couch anymore, but we have our own apartment now. I, I'm coming. I, I'm saying something now. You know, we come in. We're broken. We're this. We're calling upon God. We're at every altar call. We're weeping. We're crying. We're, you know, we're, we're not missing any service. We're here early. We're ready to go. And then all of a sudden, we, things start to start to move in our direction and start to get better. And we start to start to feel stronger. Uh, you know, we, we, things start to line up. The cricket places start to become straight. straight and we have a tendency to, to, to forget and to, 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 to not remember the one that made the cricket places straight. We forget the one that showed up and showed off uh, 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 five, year, five months ago and six months ago and seven months ago. Amen. We have a tendency to forget, amen, um, how, uh, how he, he was merciful and how, 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 how he was patient with us. And, 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 and we, we come in and, and, and we start doing better. And then all of a sudden, we have a tendency sometimes to just kind of do our own thing. We start to miss church. We, we start to get away from the things that we were doing before. And here we are again back in a place called Baca. Uh, uh, we find ourselves in a place called Baca, not because God wanted to put us there, but our circumstances or our our choices because now we're in disobedience and rebellion because now uh, uh, he's not in control uh, 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 of our lives, but we've taken control of our lives once again. It's not his will, but it's become our will once again. Uh, it's not his way, but it's become our way. But five months ago, it's your way, Lord, not my way. Your will, not my will. Lord, use me for your glory. And about six, seven months later, now it's become my way, my will, my wisdom. And, 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 and because of doing it my way, my will, my wisdom, we find ourselves uh, in a mess again, and, and we find ourselves in a place called Baca, but God loves us so much that he uses that place called Baca once again to bring us back to him. Amen? It's God's love. It's God's mercy. It's God's grace trying to get a hold of us again to say, what are you doing? 
Don't you remember where you were a year ago? Don't you remember where you were five years ago? I'm not your enemy. I'm not against you. I love you. And I'm trying to get your attention right now. Through your choices, you've ended up in this place. But I am trying to get your attention. Because if you continue in this direction, it's going to get worse. Greater tragedy, greater pain, greater, greater heartache is in the horizon. And I'm trying to help you avoid it. And tonight, God is saying, to some in this room, you are in Baca because God is calling you back. You've stepped away from the things of God. You being here tonight is not an accident. It is the grace of God. It is the mercy of God. Trying to get a, your attention because he's trying to get you back on track so he can get you at the place called Zion. It's where we get closer to God. It's where we, it, Revelation lets us know uh, in what, the church where it says, you've forsaken your first love. Repent and, and return back. Uh, repent and come back to what you did before. Amen. You've forsaken your first love. You've forsaken your first love. You've forsaken your first love. Here's a word. This is not the sermon. This is not a sermon part of it right now. I'm telling you right now. Thus saith the Lord to some of us in this room right now. You have forsaken your first love. God says repent and come back to me. Yeah. Number two, baka baka is where we decrease and he increases. It's where we become zero. He becomes number one and we make a perfect ten. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's where a name change takes place. It's where we go, like, from Jacob. Jacob was a deceiver and a, and a player and a hustler. He was, he was a trickster, Jacob. That's what his name meant, deceiver. And when he, when he was in his Baca experience, when his, when his brother was coming and he heard his brother was coming, he was, he was afraid of his life, and he, he, overnight he wrestled um, with the Lord, the Bible says. He, he, was, uh, he was having a Baca experience, amen. And, and, and the Bible lets us know that during that time, he went from being Jacob to Israel, amen. He had a name change. He, he was delivered from being that person, a deceiver, a, a hustler, a trickster, amen, a, a player, and he, and he became Israel, a prince, amen. It's in the... It's it's where we have our name changes, amen. It's where some of the junk gets out of our lives. Are you in this place, amen? It's, some of, it's, it's, where, it's where the fire gets turned up and some stuff that we don't see from before we start to see later. Teen Challenge, you know what? I, I said this when I was up in New River. It's when you feel that pressure and it's the second or third month that you're in there. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, 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 someone's telling you to do something in authority, and, and you're like, what? You know, uh, you know, why do I have to do it? Or you don't like what's, how they say it or how they're being told. Or you think somebody else should be doing it. And your response is kind of like, it's not, it's not a very, your, your response is not one of a big smile. Say, yes, I would love to do that. That's wonderful, amen. Praise the Lord. But, but you see, it's not about what you're doing. Or even if, they're, even if you're asked to do something that's not even correct or right the bottom line is it's not about what they're asking you to do it's your response it's what's coming out of you see God has, God has put you in a place to get the deeper things out of you the pride the don't you know the respecting don't they know who I am well who, who are you and who am I without Jesus see it's in that place where we start to realize you know what we get rid of the pride because before man's fall comes pride. This, 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 this insanity of the way the enemy has 
uh, here we are in church. Here we are at Teen Challenge. Here we are at Fire and Water, and we still have this attitude, this arrogance, this, 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 this like that we think we're something. Really? Let me tell you. Let me ask you. How did that work out for you? How did that work out for you? Because the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain to build it. It's coming down. Apart from him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can do all things. It's in this place of brokenness of weeping, that God has a way of getting our attention, that we really look at ourselves and say, wow, am I that arrogant? Am I really that full of myself? Am I really? That mean? Am I really that jealous? Am I really that lustful? Man, I'm gonna say, you, got, you guys aren't ready for this, amen. I'm not, I'm not. Because we're talking about going to the next, talking about going to Zion. But Baca is the place that surgery is taking place and stuff is worked on if we allow God to work on it. Because when everything is kind of falling apart and we find ourselves in a place all by ourselves, we start to see some stuff in us that we don't see before. We start to see the unforgiveness. We start to see the bitterness. We start to see that, 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 that maybe, yeah, just maybe, ah, just maybe, it's not everybody else's fault, but maybe... <laughs> I'm where I'm at because of me. Just maybe you start to realize it's not neighbor's fault. It's not mom's fault. It's not dad's fault. It's not the cat's fault. It's not the dog's fault. It's not the pastor's fault. It's not the seventh church I've been at for the last, within the last six months' fault. You think after seven churches in six months, maybe it's not the church, and maybe the church doesn't have a problem, but maybe you got the problem, and you're the one of the issue, and maybe you're the one. Maybe. Amen. I got it. Okay. It's where the surgery takes place. Corrections are made. D.L. Moody said about Moses, the first 40 years, he thought that he was somebody, the great Moses. The second 40 years of his life, he found out that he was nobody. The last 40 years of his life, he found out what God can do with a nobody. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's the, and, and it's in Baca that God prepares us for the next level. We are stripped of everything, and then he pours in everything that we need to be the, to be the, to be the, the, the voices, to be the giants, to be the champions that God's called us to be. It's, 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 it's in that place where, where God prepares us for the promotion. It's, 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 the, it's the process. It's the process before the promise, amen? But, but, but we always got to remember before God brings us to a promise or a, a promotion or increase or uh, to that next level that God's called us to, there's always going to be a process, amen? But before you get to the promise, hey, there's going to be the process, but, we, but God will always bring provision, uh, uh, his grace, and help us, um, not, uh, to, to help us during the process. So provision will come during the process so, the, so, so it can help us get to the promise, amen? So process is always first before the promise amen uh, uh, the promise doesn't come before process process comes before the promise amen but during the process God always brings provision what you need his grace is sufficient for thee to help you through the process to get you to the promise so you can be the champion that God's called you to be amen
And tonight, I want to encourage you to run to God, to trust the Lord. Because God's getting your attention. It's where you decrease and he increases. And number three, he's positioning you and preparing you for your promotion. God's about to do something great. But blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, as they pass through, look at someone say through, the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. That's where you get stronger and stronger. Uh, every one of them appears before God in Zion. As they pass through the valley of Baca, the place of weeping, they make it a spring. Well, we can just sit there for a moment. They what? They make it a what? In other words, they make it a celebration. They make it a good thing because they understand Zion's next. You know, Isaiah, over here, come here for a second. I'm going to finish with Isaiah, come here. The reason why I wanted him to sing again and Ramona sang with again, you understand that this young man, because many of you didn't hear him on Sunday or Saturday, that he, wrote the, he, he's, he wrote that song. Yeah. When his father passed away, um, um, how, how long has it been now? How many months? I can't now, it hasn't been a year yet, right? It hasn't been a year. Um, Seaborn, who is our head usher here, and he was one of our pillars here at the church. I mean, he, he was one, well, when we say fire and water, boom. Amen. And always is going to be remembered. And we're all going to be looking forward to seeing him someday. And we know that he finished strong in the sense that he was praising God. Amen? We know that. But when he passed away, he, he struggled with it in the beginning. You know, because remember he, because he was dealing with cancer, and then, and then he got better, and then he got worse again. I mean, I, you know, just being real, it's like, okay, God, what are you doing here? You know? Now we understand, too, like for some, sometimes we will pray, and I don't have all the answers. So don't come and ask. I, I don't know. All I know is when someone has Jesus and they get to heaven, that's the ultimate healing. Okay, so, so what we think is healing, okay, he didn't, he, they didn't get healed. Well, they're in heaven, so they're with God, so they're not struggling. So I guess that is the ultimate healing, amen? So, but, but that doesn't still make it easy or comfortable when you love somebody and you've had them next to you for a long time and they're not with you. So that's, I can't, you know, that's just, but God's grace. Yes, ask for God's grace. But he, 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 you know, in the beginning, you were, you were angry, right? I mean, just, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make a point because what you heard him sing tonight, he's taking what, what the enemy could have used to take him out. And now God's using it to encourage you. Amen. So uh, his weeping, his baka, because he responded eventually the right way, faithful, serving in the house of God, helping in the church, singing the song. It's not just the songs, but doing all, the, coming up to me saying, is there anything else, pastor, that you need? And actually, all the kids, Seaborn Jr., taking the baton, uh, uh, and now ushering and working, has his own place, just got, just got, he's got a wonderful testimony also, got his own, just got his car, praise the Lord, just got his own car, amen, praise the Lord. And, 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 and so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Sabrina over here, every one of them are serving God with all their heart. And every one of them, after that took place, because that wasn't easy. I know what they've been through. I know the, the, the process of it. And I know they're still going through it. But because they've responded the right way, God is, in, <laughs> their Baca experience is turning into a stepping stone to glorify his name, where they could have sat there and said, well, I'm a, you know, look at what's happened. And, but no, 
I'm victorious through Christ. God's got this. You know, there's a reason for everything. I know we're gonna. I want to see. We're gonna see Him one, once again. And look at what God's doing now. It's how we respond to those moments. If you allow God. So so when you when you so so it was like right after you were you were eating right. I mean, it's... Yeah. Um. The morning. The morning when my father passed, my mother, she called me and, you know. I, when she told me that he died, I, I, I got so angry because I was on my way to school and I was just so angry. And I, I was on the, I just remember I was sitting on the bus stop waiting for the ten to go down to the hospital, and I just, I just broke down. I was, I was so angry at the Lord that I started cussing at the God. I, I started, I, I, I just started being so angry at the Lord, and I said some things that, man. I still, I still regret and repent about saying to the Lord, but I was just so angry because I prayed so hard. I prayed so hard for my father, you know, to be healed. But at that mind state, at the at the mind state I was in, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to believe that being in heaven was the was the greatest healing, you know, because that was just in my heart. I just thought that, you know, we serve a God that heals, you know, he, he all the stuff he did in the Bible with healing people and rising people from the dead and stuff. I just thought about that stuff. I just thought he just couldn't keep my father around for, for for me just a little while longer and I was so angry with the Lord and anger and hatred rose up inside of me and and and, and just and just after that I was I was so depressed and you know I, I I like depression was was just all over me and I wanted to I wanted to commit suicide because I was just you know I was I was done with everything I just felt like man I don't have nothing I don't I, my mom don't care my my father's gone you know I'm just I'm just all alone and you know that that was the Baca experience for me, and you know it, it and it and it showed me it, it brought me to the place where I'm at now with the Lord because the Lord He pulled me out of my darkest pit, my darkest hour when I was ready to give up, when I was ready to lose everything. He came and He pulled me out, and you know I just I just know that it was Him. It was Him that brought me out of where I was, and it it was it was a hard experience for me, but you know God God made some good out of it. I'll tell you, you know what? I'm so proud of him. Really, I'm, the growth and how God's raising this young man up is, is unbelievable. It's humbling me, and it's, and it's encouraging me. You're encouraging me. You're, no, no, you, got, no you, got, you don't understand. You are, you are giving me hope, and you're helping me get up every morning. Here, think about what I just said. Think about what I just said. What I'm seeing in you. It's helping me get out of bed to keep doing what I'm doing. Think about that. Do you do you, do you have you know? And you and uh, do we remember that the, the song that you sang in the beginning? Yeah. Do you know? Do you have that or do we, do we have the music or do you remember that or how you wrote it or whatever? Uh, I, I still have it. But I don't remember. You don't remember? All right, everybody's got all those sleep differences. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want to hear another song. What other song can we? Um, you know what? Get you know what? Next next service, have that song. Get that song. Yeah. Um, 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 so I want so so I want to encourage everybody here tonight that Baca is not your final destination. That if you choose to get a hold of God, trust in Him, it becomes a stepping stone. Stronger, more anointed, more on fire, more focused, stronger. It's a stepping stone for your destiny and your purpose. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. And tonight, I want to encourage you in this place. Many of you in this place, don't give up. Don't stop. Keep on keeping on. Keep trusting God. Let the Holy Spirit continue the work that he's doing in your life. Don't be impatient. Don't be in a rush. And I promise you, you're gonna, the next destination will be Zion for, your, for the glory of God. Amen? Amen? If we can all stand to our feet, praise God. Just lift up your hand and say, I receive it. I receive it. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. That's only half the hands. Stand, let's all stand our feet and praise God. Amen. That was like, yeah. Uh, are you ready? Every hand lifted up. I receive it. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what I want to do is, let's do this. This is how we're going to finish this. Because we're going to sell it. We're going to release our faith here tonight because great days are ahead. Where's every, let's, let's, do we have our, can we do like, look what the Lord has done. Do we, do we have, do we have, do we have the, do we have our, can we pull it off? Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's release our faith as we sing this song. And when we sing this song, what you're saying is, God, I know you got me covered. I'm going to trust in you. Continue to follow in you. When God shows you something in your heart, be quick to, and even tonight, God has shown some of you in this room some things that you need to deal with. Bring that to the altar. Let God take care of it. Amen. Surrender that. Maybe it's bitterness, unforgiveness, whatever it might be. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, the Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Your miracle and your turnaround starts with a relationship with Jesus. If that's you, I would ask you to come to the front of the altar and we're going to have people pray with you and lead you to Jesus. Amen. That's where the miracle starts. In a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Praise the Lord. Guys, don't forget this Friday night we have our men's meeting. Back here over the weekend. All right. So praise the Lord. Are you ready? Praise the Lord. Look at somebody. It's a setup for a step up. Praise the Lord. Do you believe it? Amen.
Satan is under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Set free. I've been set free. I've been set free. I've been set free. Satan is under my feet. I've been set free. I've been set free. I've been set free. Satan is under my feet. He's 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 under my feet. Satan. Come on, tell someone he's under your feet. He's under your feet. He's under your feet. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Under your feet. He's under your feet. He's under your feet. He's under your feet. Satan is under your feet. He's 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 under your feet. Satan is under your feet. Ah, uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound like you guys want to come out of Baca. You know what? That doesn't sound like they want to come out. I don't know, Jesse. I don't know, Jesse. It sounds like people want to stay in Baca. Anybody want to come out? I said, anybody want to come out? All right, well, let your praise, your shout, your clap, prophesy, yes. decree and declare that I'm coming out because God's with me. I have a word from the Lord, and I'm coming out stronger, more anointed, more on fire for God. Now, if that's you, I dare you right now to... He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. I've been set free. I've got the victory. I've been set free. I've got the victory. I've been set free. I've got the victory. Satan is under my feet. Spirit. 
Dance, I will dance, I will dance like David did. 